in a recent mailbag, I opened up this kit, which is a, which calls itself anyway, a musical Tesla coil kit. Um, this is one that my Patreon supporters requested that I order and build. So here it is. Thanks for the support, guys. Beer du jour, Grandpa's Sweater Oatmeal Stout. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it many times before. So when I pulled this guy out of my mailbag, um, there was a bunch of comments on it. Several people pointed out that it's not actually a real Tesla coil. The schematic is different. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today. Um, I'm sure you guys can debate it in the comments. Uh, there's a good article on Wikipedia. Of course, it has good articles on everything. Talking about Tesla coils and showing a few different variants on the schematic of a Tesla coil. Uh, feel free to compare this schematic against what you find there. As I said, I'm not going down that rabbit hole today. Uh, the other comment that I got from several people on that uh, mailbag video was that they had tried to build this kit or one similar to it and either had bad luck or no luck or complete failure. Um, so I'm not sure whether or not this one's going to... Uh, be a success, but I'm going to go for it anyways. You never know until you try, right? So I'm going to use this uh, board holder, um, which is the most recent one that I've got and one of the best ones that, I, that I've found so far. Um, you can go back a few videos and uh, find out where I'm uh, taking a look at it. I may have to re-grip this at some point, but we'll start here anyway. And I think we'll start with the resistors. There's 10K and a 2K and a 10K and a 2K. Which on the schematic, so there's a 2K and a 10K that are biasing the gate of this one, of this uh, MOSFET. Hey, wait a minute. Oh yeah, okay, I've got a MOSFET and I've got a uh, an NPN, okay. And these other two, um, 10K is... Looks like it's biasing the base. No, it's uh, in series with the audio going to this NPN transistor. And this 2K is in series with this LED. And this LED here is in parallel with the base emitter junction of that transistor. Okay. Um, which LED? Those are both red, so they'll be 1.6 volts. So that'll only light up when this thing is being driven really hard into saturation by the sounds of it. What else can we tell here? Got a one microfarad blocking capacitor to keep the... Uh, oh, that's on the ground side of that. Interesting. Hmm. So the audio is going in there. The audio, There is no blocking capacitor on the actual audio, just on the ground side, not on the audio path side. So that tells me that I'm not going to connect this up to my computer. I'm going to use probably a, the cheapest MP3 player I can find just in case. Okay, this is a fairly simple little circuit to throw together. And again, I'm not going to go too deep into the theory of it, other than that uh, basically the uh, high voltage part is an amplifier, a, a transformer basically. Two to three turns here on the primary side and 350 turns on the secondary side. The primary side is in the in series with the collector of this transistor and is also in series with the uh, drain source path of this uh, MOSFET here. So, yeah, so power is coming in from up there. What's the other thing? Um, I believe the listing, if I remember correctly, said this thing can take up to 19 volts DC. I'm just going to double check that before I do it, before I connect it up. And I'll probably just connect it to like 12 volts or something anyway. That's the first thing for me to do. Me being all colorblind and everything and can't do resistors very well. So figure out which are the 10K and which are the 2K. 
That one is a 2K resistor. Okay, so let's do those ones first. One of the 2K goes in there. And some people like to form the, their resistor leads nice and precisely and uh, make them all neat and pretty. Notice the neat, pretty knolling that I did? Yeah, that's where this is going. People who get OCD panic symptoms from watching YouTube videos probably have figured out by now that my channel isn't the one for them. Okay, and this one I'm guessing is the 10K. Well, it's supposed to be 10K, but let's make sure. Yes, it is. Okay, and those. And then there. And over there, come on, get. And a quick flip, there we go. Have to slide that up a little bit, I think. Okay, and just get to busy soldering in here. This is one of those, it's a, an FR4, I believe it is, the fiberglass style circuit board but it's thinner than some that i've seen i guess it really doesn't matter I mean, this thing isn't in automotive use where it's going to be vibrated around a whole bunch so as long as the pads hold on to the board and the board uh, keeps everything relatively in place that's all that we really need from this Okay, snippity snip. So the LEDs, that one's reddish. So is that one the same? Oh, pop them into their two slots here. Do I want them to stand off the board? Sure, why not? Long lead is the positive side. Short lead is the negative side. Negative side goes towards the bar part of the symbol on the circuit board. Uh, uh, TTD, little capacitor. What does that say? 105? Yeah, 105. Okay. Which is, in fact, a 1 microfarad? Sure. Where do you go, capacitor? Over here. That shows it, let me just zoom in on the board here, that shows it as a polarized capacitor, an electrolytic, as does that. But that's not what they included in the kit. Hmm. Does it matter that it's not electrolytic? I don't know. It looks like it's just being a DC block as far as we can tell, so we'll go for it. This isn't a high precision kit. I'm not too worried about it. If it doesn't work first try, yeah, we'll make it work. Or we'll declare it a piece of garbage and nobody will ever know. Besides, so enough people have said that they've made this kit or one similar to it and theirs didn't work. So, worst case scenario, I guess I can just blame it on that rather than my own sloppiness yeah that's the ticket okay what else we got here oh we have a microfarad electrolytic capacitor oops hey change of plans and i'm not gonna get all the solder off with this cheap crappy wick either but just gonna get some out I guess we're going to get to see just how well this board holds the pads together. That's close enough. I can work with that. So, negative goes that side, which means positive goes this side. I'm not sure if this is a an official trick or not, but I'll just use the lead and heat it up and 
Use that to clear the last crap out of the pad. Essentially creating a cold solder joint temporarily. Get in there. Shove him down, 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 down. This is not ideal. This is not professional. I never cleaned. That's what I was trying to do. And please don't take me for an expert. I don't even play one on the internet. I'm just a guy in your shop having fun. Okay, now then, where'd that ceramic capacitor go that I pulled off? There it is. And where should it go? Down there. Straighten these leads out after abusing them. Knock the remnants of solder off of there. Okay, back to where it was supposed to go in the first place. Fortunately, ceramic capacitors are one of the more durable uh, components when it comes to heat. So I'm not too worried about the health of that guy. What's left? Let's put the audio jack on. That goes down there. So this is a pretty simple kit. There's not that many parts on it. I think with the audio jack, I'll try and live dangerously and just hold it in place with my finger while I solder it. There's the anchor pin. That's good, that's good. Well, the anchor and the ground pin, I guess, technically. That looks pretty solid. There's the power plug. I might as well throw that on, too. Oh, yeah, it says right on the board, DC 15 to 24 volts. Okay. I'm paranoid about this thing going out of focus as I keep moving things around, so I'm going to occasionally just manually tap the focus. Hopefully nobody gets dizzy. Throw a bit more solder on that guy. I think this one is just for mechanical stability. I'm not sure. It is an electrical connection. But the ground is this one and the positive is that one. What are you? You're jack three. Oh, that's the alternate power input over there. Okay. Uh, now I've got my two transistors. That is the TIP41C, which goes there. And this one is the IRF530, which goes down there. Only slightly bent. Uh, yeah, and I know that they face that way and that way because they get heat sinks attached to them. And before I solder them down, I'm going to screw the heat sinks on. This screwdriver is supposed to be magnetic, but it isn't very strong magnet. So I've been sticking a little ball magnet or a little magnet of some sort onto it just to make it additionally magnetic. You probably saw me doing the same thing in the, uh, which video was that? Oh, the, uh, solar power bank video because the screws on that thing were absolutely minute and I just could not keep a handle on them oh come on normally when you're doing this with a heat sink directly on there you'd put some heat sink goo behind it and a lot of times you would uh oh I stripped that thread yeah crap Hey, I'm not going to, though, because, one, I've jammed that uh, screw in there so much that it's not coming out. Actually, that's the main reason. So that guy, just double check, TIP41C, yeah, so that can go in there. 
And the other thing that you would often do or generally do when you're putting a uh, transistor on a heatsink like that is you'd usually put an insulating pad behind it and insulate the screw. I'm not going to do that because this I don't have any. Well, actually, I do have some, but I don't. Uh, it doesn't matter for this one because the heat sinks themselves aren't grounded or aren't in contact with anything else. So as long as I don't reach out and touch them, I should be safe. This one, I think, just for the fun of it, I will put a bit of heat sink goo on. This is some ancient Radio Shack heat sink goo, which I have had for decades. Anybody in Canada will know why. Oh, and the Americans are starting to learn why, too. Because Radio Shack hasn't existed here for a very long time. But I've had this for even longer than that. This seems like a pretty low-stress uh, application, so even if it doesn't work very well, it'll be better than nothing, and there won't be any great loss. There's the downside of using magnets on your tools. Shit sticks to everything. There, you even got visible heat sink goo squeeze out. Okay, so there's those two in place. Solder time. Now I'm just going to be slightly cautious of these. Not throw too much heat into them for too much time. Spread the heat around a bit. Again, that's probably an excess of caution, especially because these are fairly beefy transistors that are intended to get hot during operation and survive said heat. So, that looks reasonable. Yeah, also got decent solder joints. Don't see any track bridging. Okay. Those are all held nice and straight. All that's left is to put the coil together. So we've got a primary coil and a secondary coil. Primary coil is just this wire. And it says right on the board even, two to three turns. So I'll strip one end. That's a solid core wire. And do we go clockwise or counterclockwise around it? I don't know. Now then this thing has two pieces of wire coming out of it. One of them is right there. And one of them is right there. Underneath the little sticker. Come on. Man, that's fine. Okay. So which one becomes the flying lead and which one becomes the solder em down lead? I'm thinking the one with the dot on it. It becomes the flying lead. So I'm going to solder one side of the primary in first. Let's say it's this one down here just because. Trim him short. And then he has to go around this coil. Should I do two or three? Let's do two. Well, no, let's do three. Well, no, there's enough left over that if we need more, we can just remake it. And I'm out of frame again because, because, because. Cut that a little bit long. Strip the end off. Now, I noticed recently Andreas Spice, Andreas Spice did a video on uh, on wire strippers. 
I still prefer to do it this way because that's the way I've been doing it forever. I could do it this way if I wanted to. And for, war for a little bit larger gauge wires, I do. Or using this one, which I've had forever. Or I could use this one, one of these automatic ones. But I really don't like it. It has a bad habit of nicking the wires. And it's kind of a cheap one anyway. I like going old school just like this. Okay, there's the primary side. So that should, um, I may have to adjust that later to get it around this coil. Also, I don't know if that's just, that's going to uh, actually physically fit, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So that goes in there. Yep, that's holding on. And then there's multiple different ways that you can um, take the enamel off this kind of wire. Oh, that's perfect. You see that? It's just wedged on there. So that's going to hold it while I'm soldering. That's awesome. Uh, anyway, who was it? Oh, yeah. There's multiple ways that you can take the enamel off this magnet wire. One of the ways is just to burn it off with your soldering iron, which is what I'm going to do. and hope that it works. Where's my knife? The other, another way you can do it is just to kind of scrape it off with a knife. And I'm gonna actually scrape some of this solder resist off down here. Actually, no, I'm gonna fold that back on itself after the piece that I scraped off. Just to double, double, right? Just quick double down on this just to make sure that it actually does solder. There, let's call that on. Now then, I don't like that thing flopping around in the breeze like that. Not at all. I know what I'm gonna do. I'll dot of the old Kregel. I ought to hold it once it dries. While that's hardening up, spin the board around in the holder here and put the feet on it. Which are just some brass or copper standoffs and screws. Not electrically insulating, but I'm going to have this on my wood and, uh, and cutting mat surface here, so it should be relatively electrical isolated from anything that can hurt me i'm not expecting uh that, and this thing should have in the one to two thousand volt range no it'll probably have more than that once you get spikes um but it's not going to be like crazy high voltage it's going to be more than you'd want to touch it's also going to be low current but still i don't want to get bit So I'm going to try and show a healthy respect for this thing. I think that's ready. Uh, yeah. So that's just the area or the antenna. I'm just going to leave that dot on it so that we can find it again in midair. I'm going to clear some of this stray bits of metal off my workbench and I'll have a beer and I'll be right back. So I think I'm going to power this from this laptop power brick here which says it's 19 volts, 4.7 amps, which should be more than adequate. Let's just make sure it's actually doing that. As you may recall, I've been burned before by power supplies that aren't doing what they say they're doing. Yeah, so 19 volts, that's what we expect, okay? So with this unplugged, so I'm not gonna kill myself, and we'll attach that over there. Now then, place your bets. Will it do anything? We have two LEDs, that's a good sign. 
Now they included this little neon bulb in the... Oh, 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 oh. Can you see that? Right at the... I'm not going to get my finger too close, but... Where's my pointer? Right there. Can you see that? Let's focus on it. That looks like a little blue arc right there. So they've included in the kit this little neon bulb here. And if I hold it close to the arc, ha ha ha, it should glow. Wow, from way far away too. I'm going to zoom out a bit here. So I'm just going straight sideways. So right there is, oh, you can see the lines on my bench, right? They're an inch apart. One inch sideways, two inches, three inches. So two and a half to three inches. Wow. That's throwing some power. Okay. So the next thing to do, I guess, is to hook up to the audio jack of this thing and see if it makes noise. Okay, uh, this audio part, I give up. I've been dicking with it for a while, and I've connected an MP3 player through this little LM358 amplifier board. Uh, no, LM387, sorry, amplifier board, and you can see what's happened to it. That would be the uh, blocking cap coming back from the thing. So I'm not going to risk any more of my stuff. I'm certainly not going to connect a better amplifier to it to try and get it to do its thing. But um, it does at least Tesla coil, uh, which we proved earlier. Well, okay. Yes, I know. It's not really a Tesla coil, or maybe it is. Who knows? But it still works, even after blowing that cap up. What was that? That was 100 nanofarad, 25 volt cap on that thing. So it still does its thing. It still generates a little blue arc there, which is cool enough as in, in and of itself. Actually, well, let me try one more thing here. Hang on. Let's try this one other thing here. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And this doesn't even have the rest of the ballast on it. This is just that part of the bulb. That's pretty neat. Wow. So that's a fair bit of energy coming out of that thing. And it's cool to play with high voltage to a certain extent, as long as you know what you're doing. You don't get too close, don't get your hands in there. Admittedly, as I said, this is relatively low current. So it's probably not going to kill me, but I'm sure it's going to be unpleasant if you, uh, if you touch it. So we'll just leave that where it is, shall we? Anyway, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Thanks to my Patreons for suggesting that I get this thing. Um, I hope uh, everybody found it amusing or interesting. Um, I'm sure there's going to be comments and questions down below. I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer all those questions, but I'll uh, certainly read all the comments and hopefully somebody can answer some of the questions that I can't. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.